Welcome to episode 8 of Upgrade My PC, please. This episode was meant to be aired last week, but I got sick, so it's been delayed to this week, and we do have one more episode coming next week. Anyway, on the episode two weeks ago, which would have been episode eight, we did have five randomly selected computers all in need of various upgrades, and you, the viewers, voted Scott's FX8120 PC, the most worthy of receiving the proposed upgrades. And that means coming his way will be a Ryzen 5 1400 processor, the MSI B350 motherboard, eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and a GeForce GTX 1050 graphics card. So not a bad little upgrade package there at all. And then of course, for all you viewers, don't forget to vote each week because that will place you in the running to win some very cool prizes and those are global giveaways. Last episode's winner took home a very cool AMD Ryzen 5 CPU. This week's winner will be announced at the end of the video and you'll find out what's being given away then. All right, now we have a randomly, another random bunch of randomly, random, randomly selected random computers. It's all very random. Let's go check it out. Andrew built the system eight years ago with multitasking in mind, he says. Initially, the system was built inside the Alienware ALX case, which featured a 1000 watt power supply. The Alienware case was starting to fall apart though, and it looked pretty miserable, I'm told. So earlier this year, Andrew replaced it with the impressive Case Labs SMA8. He also brought over that 1000 watt power supply. He says since he can't afford all the parts for an enthusiast grade build, all at once. He started with the case and has decided to work from there. Right now the system is used for gaming and video editing and Andrew is keen to check out more modern gaming titles. He just needs an upgrade first. Obviously the objective would be to replace the very old AMD Phenom 2 X4 955 processor and if possible the Radeon HD 6870 graphics card as well. However given how serious Andrew seems about his liquid cooling hardware I feel we really should opt for something a bit more extreme than your entry level or your typical entry level B350 motherboard. So let's slot the Ryzen 5 1600 onto Gigabyte's AX370 Gaming K3 with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 memory. That really is the best option for a content creator on a $500 US budget. This upgrade will drastically reduce Andrew's render times. In fact, I can't really even imagine what it would be like going from a Phenom 2 processor to something like the Ryzen 5 1600. James first built this PC back in 2012, and at the time it did have a Radeon HD 5450 graphics card, which was later upgraded to a HD 6870, and then finally last year the Radeon R9 Fury was dropped in, and at the time he also took the opportunity to move everything into a shiny new Corsair Vengeance C70 case. The storage and power supply have also been upgraded, and the PC really was built to play games and edit videos, and today nothing has changed. James also went Harvey's in a HTC Vive with his brother and it works on the PC, he says, but he is keen to expand upon the games they can play. And well, this will require a CPU upgrade. He's also keen to increase the processing power of the CPU for his video editing and now CAD work. His plan right now is to upgrade to the AM4 platform and he likes the option of being able to buy either a Ryzen 5 or perhaps even a Ryzen 7 CPU or maybe even something better in the future. Given how poor availability is of the 8th gen core series right now, Ryzen really is the only option. That said, for gaming and productivity performance, it's really hard to go past something like the Ryzen 5 1600. So it's a pretty simple upgrade then, as was the case with the previous build. Let's go with the Ryzen 5 1600, but this time we will be putting it on the slightly more affordable ASUS Prime B350 Plus with eight gigabytes of memory and then we'll be calling it a day. That combo will be able to extract much more performance from that Radeon R9 Fury graphics card, should James win. Next up we have John's Lazy Moose. Built with his dad just before Christmas late last year after purchasing the CPU, motherboard and memory second hand. Then they picked up the most affordable graphics card they could which happened to be the Radeon RX 460 and they threw that in the smallest, cheapest case they could find which turned out to be the Cooler Master Elite 110. It's a neat little PC, but despite being just shy of a year old, it really struggles to play anything more than the most basic games, such as Age of Empires 2, Rocket League, and Quake. 
While the Radeon RX 460 isn't the most potent GPU, the real issue here is the Skylake Dual Core Pentium processor. Now we could ditch the G4400 for something like the Core i7-7700, but $410 Aussie, that's not really a cost effective move, and we'd still have to make do with that H110 board. For slightly more, we can pick up a B350 motherboard with a 6 core, 12 threaded Ryzen 5 1600. Then, if we really push the budget, we can squeeze in a GeForce GTX 1050 Ti, which will be a fairly substantial upgrade from that RX 460. This upgrade will enable John to make further upgrades in the future, whereas the H110 board was pretty much a dead end. The 7700K would have been the end of the road there. So I feel, given the budget, this is probably the best option going forward. Next up, we have another Aussie, Francesca, a fellow Melbourneian. And on display is the tiny purple pixel eater. This swanky rig looks far more impressive than it really is, I have to say. Despite looking the part inside, it's powered by a rather underwhelming AMD A8 6600K APU, though the GPU firepower has been improved with the GTX 960. The system does have 8GB of memory, but of course it is DDR3 memory, so we'll have to give that the flick. That said, the Samsung Evo 250GB SSD is a nice addition and we'll certainly keep that along with the funky looking AeroCool X Predator Cube case. Francesca is a gamer who admits she was once an Xbox slash Wii gamer, but her fiance showed her the light and got her to become a member of the PC Master Race. The only problem is she wants to get into more modern games and the system really is struggling and she says it often freezes. This then's another job for Ryzen. That said though, if the Core i5-8400 was in stock, that might have been my recommendation for this one. Anyway, as it stands, the R5-1600 is the only option and we'll slot that onto the Gigabyte AB350M-D3H motherboard. Since we can't really afford a better graphics card on our budget, let's instead opt for 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. If Francesca wins, perhaps she can sell that old hardware, get rid of the GTX 960 and perhaps replace that with a GTX 1060 or something along those lines. Last but not least, we have Joshua's Prowl, a humble old Core 2 quad system that I just had to include because his photos are so nice. There you go, guys. Pro tip for season two of Upgrade My PC, please. It's all about them photos. Anyway, handy camera work aside, Joshua certainly needs a few upgrades. Joshua sounds like a real PC part scavenger, like he could almost be Brian from Tech Yes City's brother. No offense, mate. He says he's that guy who collects old used and unwanted parts from his friends and puts them in his own PC. As a result, in 2017, this is what he's dealing with, and things look as though they're probably moving quite slowly. Despite the PC's age, he still enjoys games such as Prey, and he also does a lot of video editing work in Premiere. So while Joshua would like to enjoy the latest and greatest games, his focus really is on video editing work. Given the GeForce GTX 970 he is still very capable, especially at 1080p, we don't really need to allocate any of our budget here. Instead, we're going to be focusing entirely on rendering power, and that means securing the mighty AMD Ryzen 7 1700, an 8-core 16-thread CPU, and that will make light work of Joshua's videos. The Ryzen processor will be installed on the impressive-looking ASUS ROG Strix B350-F gaming motherboard with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. All right, guys, there's five different PCs, all in need of various upgrades. It's now your job to let us know which one you think is the most deserving of receiving the proposed upgrade package. To cast your vote, follow the link in the video description. That'll head you over to the TechSpot forums. By signing up for the forums, commenting, and voting, you'll also go on the running to win some cool prizes, and those are, again, global giveaways. Speaking of which, the winner from last week's episode is Sharath Dia. Hope I said that even remotely correctly. Anyway, congratulations, mate. I don't think you're going to care because you now have an AOC gaming monitor coming your way, and it is a FreeSync supported monitor. Big thanks to AOC for providing that amazing prize. Remember, guys, vote and comment each week because that will put you in the running to win more awesome prizes. Finally, as always, voting is open till Friday night in the US, and that's Saturday afternoon here in Australia. And then we'll announce the winner of this episode at the start of next week's episode, which should be shown next week, assuming I don't get sick again. Of course, then we will have five new PCs to look at and we'll do it all over again, though that will be the last episode of the season. 
I'm your host, Steve. Go get voting, guys.